Hey guys, what's up? Just going to share a stunning uh, Blitz game with you in the Russo. So I don't have fantastic results in the Russo so far, but I'm going to stick with it. Um, so I've, I've kind of gone off the um, the like the immediate Latvian right now because I feel like if if people do play the Spanish, then um, I've been having very good results uh, with this one, with the Janish Gambit. So I don't really want to give that up. And the Latvian's kind of dubious, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm comfortable with this anyway. So we, we have the Italian game. My opponent's rated, it's rated 1460, 1461 at the start of this game. So it's an 8 8. We finish both on 1453 because I win. All right, so this is the Russo Gambit from the Italian game. It's a nice surprise for Italian players. They are not expecting this, and very very often they don't know what to do. E takes is, I think, probably the most common move. And um, we don't have to worry about the queen coming into h5 yet. So we can throw in the immediate e4. In fact, a pre-move e4, because it's, uh, it, it's very common. Now, the knight can't come here or here because of my knight, and can't come here or here because of my queen. So there's only two moves, really. Either the knight will retreat, or you get queen e2, which you meet with queen e7, just like you do in the Vienna Gambit. Okay, so if you're not very clever and you don't want to remember a lot of stuff like me, then um, this is, and you like playing the Vienna Gambit, that's the whole point of this repertoire. Okay, now, when the knight retreats, you must play knight f6, because otherwise it's very tempting here to push d5 straight away, and your opponent might just flinch and retreat the bishop to b3 or b5, but if they're on their toes, you might fall for this immediately, which is not good after g6. F takes g6, and then they're threatening to capture or push, and then make another queen. Not nice at all. Precious. So, my opponent now plays d3, which we're generally quite pleased to see. Um, if they play d3 here, then we go into the whatever it's called. It's got an another name. I can't remember. Can't remember. You bring out your bishop. And then you're going to push uh, maybe f4 at some point. You actually invite the knight to come in. Your queen flies out and you've got a deadly attack down here. It has a name and I can't remember what it is. So anyway, he took. And now d3 comes out. So now d5. Now this is all about front foot play. I'm playing a gambit, aren't I? Right? So I'm a pawn down. So I have to fight for compensation. If we just trade blows now, um, then I'm going to find myself in an ending, a pawn down, and that was not going to be good for me. So we have to keep our opponent on the back foot. So now the bishop retreats, and now we recapture the pawn with development. Okay, look, one, two, three happy pieces out on the board against a solo bishop, which has to be said is a bit poo, right? Because I've got now building a light square pawn chain. Opponent now plays the very natural looking knight to c3. Now, in this position, I play pawn takes d3, okay? So, queen can't take, this is the point. If he recaptures with his c-pawn, he's gonna have an isolated queen's pawn, right? So again, I'm just forcing him to do something. <clears throat> so he can't just like develop as normal, because I'm gonna like, go ahead and take another pawn or whatever. I also have a check, maybe with queen e7. Anyway, so c takes. So now he has an isolated pawn. All right, material is equal, but I have, I'm ahead in development. Um, I may have ideas about castling queenside and trying to engage my rooks very quickly. Um, so the other thing about the lead in development is that my rooks are also closer to entering the game. You see, so it's a kind of a knock-on of development advantage. My opponents just had to spend a move recapturing. So now the king's bishop flies out. So we pin the knight. Pin the knight on here. Now I think, um, I think the computer preferred knight to b4 here. I've had a quick look at the analysis. Preferred knight to b4 because I'm threatening this pawn. But I like the, the fact that I've now got all my minor pieces out on the board and whitey only has two. So now he has three. And now queen e7 with check. 
and now it's like really, really tough for White because he's 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 got them flying at him from all angles, right? He's like like King Kong on the top of the Empire State. So what does he do here? He can't block with a knight because I've got queen takes or knight takes, right? This knight, by the way, is frozen out of the game anyway. Um, he does have two attackers on here, but he's in check. So he can block with the bishop, he can block with the queen, um, or he can step away with the king. So now the, blish, the, the, the bishop, the bishop comes in, right? Now, pause if you, if you want to, find black's next move. Okay, I'm very proud of pawn to d4. It's a fork, Take he, uh, so I'm attacking both the pinned bishop and the, the knight here, which is also pinned, right? So both of these pieces are pinned. Neither of them can legally move, and that's the problem. So he takes the knight, and so he takes the pawn with his knight and loses a knight, and he's still got two pinned pieces. This is beautiful. Okay, and now we have bishop to here. So, um, what would you play here? Right, we just want to keep on the pressure, right? I don't have to do anything with this, don't have to do anything with this, they're both still pinned. He's going to want to castle at some point. So now I castle long, get my queen's rook directly onto d8. So I might have ideas about you know, lining up with the queen. Um, he castles short. And the game only goes on a few more moves. So let's just briefly evaluate. This is attacked, defended once. That's fine. It's no longer pinned, by the way. In fact, neither of these two pieces is pinned since the king moved away. So that's what we have to make a mental note of. So what would you play here? Now I decide it's time to go on the offensive. Not like I haven't been on the offensive for the whole game. Knight to g4 comes in now. Okay. So I've got ideas about maybe drop the bishop back here, this, but more likely queen straight in with um, just just total pressure. And I'm also up a piece for a pawn. So let's go. Now, opponent pushes a3, gaining a little bit of initiative for himself. I drop the bishop back to c5, he double kicks. Okay, and here I make a mistake because I drop my bishop back to b6. I should have, according to the machine, played bishop to d6. Bishop d6, and I've then got two attackers on this pawn immediately. Yeah. Um, but, on the other hand, I am blocking off this rook. So, I play bishop b6 anyway. He moves his king out of the way. And now, it's time to go in for the kill. I haven't done anything marvellously special at this point. Queen h4. And I'm simply threatening mate in one. Okay. <clears throat> and this is the type of chess that I just love. This is just sexy chess. Okay, so h3 is practically forced. I don't know what else he could do here. I'm, I'm threatening queen here. Um, he, I suppose he has bishop f4. May even drop the bishop back and hit the queen. That might have been good. So takes here and now. <clears throat> now. It's time just to, you know, keep the blows pouring in. Keep the blows raining down on my opponent, okay? I capture the bishop, right? He recaptures, and now we just, you know, you have to smell blood here, okay? So, what would you play in this position? Feel free to pause, I'll take a sip of coffee. We're a piece up for a pawn, okay? So. I can give back a piece for, for a pawn and be in on <clears throat> equal material. However, bishop takes h3, pawn takes, right? If pawn takes here, yeah, I recapture, king goes to here. Um, don't know what I would do there, but uh, I was expecting pawn takes. In the end, he captures here. And that's just worse because I now withdraw my bishop to g4, hitting the queen, discovered attack on the king. This is a double attack, right? When you combine a discovery with a, a second attack, and he's going to lose his queen for a bishop. Okay, so that's pretty much forced. 
and I don't take the queen yet. Bishop takes d4 check, right? And he's severely running out of moves. The rook must block. There's no other legal move that I can see. Um, no. <clears throat> so the king can't move here or here. King obviously can't move there. King can't stay where it is. There. And now queen takes. This is also forced. Yeah, I mean, he could go in the corner. So king h1 or king h2 doesn't really ma matter. And find out what you would play here. I mean, it's very tempting to take the queen, but the bottom line is I figure out I don't even have to because my bishop is guarding this. So queen h4 is a straightforward checkmate. 23 moves. Thank you very much. As Simon would say, stick that in the pipe and smoke it. But that's a, that's a real beauty, you know. So when these gambit lines work, by God they work, don't they? Um, that's, a, that's a lovely, a lovely start to, to one Sunday. Absolutely. So hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I doubt it, but uh, yeah, still hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, keep playing the Russo if, if you like this kind of uh, living on the edge. I certainly do, and I'm going to carry on playing it myself. So there you go. See you later, guys.